Hey, y'all. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time visiting, welcome. Please be sure to look through the content, see if you like it. Hope you do. If you do, please be sure to like the videos that you watch and also subscribe to my channel. For my returning subscribers and visitors, welcome back. As you guys saw at the beginning of the video, this is not one of our typical crafting videos. This is going to be part three of the Craft and Combos Casualty of a Con that we started um, a few weeks ago. All right, so I got mixed feedback and honestly, I really wasn't looking for any um, feedback. It really didn't matter to me. I truly want to be able to help someone else who may feel like they are stuck in a situation, someone who is being manipulated. I really want to be able to help them and let them know that it is okay. You don't have to stay where you are physically or mentally. Um, there's better for you out there. And if you've been through a traumatic situation, you can make it through. You can make it through. You just have to believe. You have to have faith. And you have to put in the work every day to not get stuck in a bad place. And it's not easy. Some days you will be stuck. Some days you won't want to do anything. And on those days, that is okay. Go ahead. Enjoy being stuck. But don't stay stuck always have in your mind you're going to move forward. So if you have a bad day, it's okay. Every day is a new day and you don't have to repeat what happened to you yesterday or how you felt. You have to live intentionally. You have to intentionally have a good day. You have to intentionally survive what you have been through. Okay, so it's okay. It's okay to have a bad day. Don't count yourself out. And that's what's most important, that you don't count yourself out. All right, so here's part three, y'all. So the church started and we were using the old bank account for the other church. And I went back and I looked at the statements once I had to use that account and I saw there that he had been using the church's money like it was his own personal money for years prior to us getting together so this was not new behavior for him and when I realized that I, I was like okay so my thing was is that he definitely tried to act like he wanted to get his credit up. He acted like he wanted to be financially stable because by that time I had kind of figured out, okay, he had lied about that. Well, there were so many other lies that came up and one key point or time in the relationship was that one time he was walking through the house and I think something was going on and he said he was going to do this. And I was like, are you sure? And then he turned to me and he was like, what, babe, you don't trust me. And it was in that instant that I could not lie. I could not put on the charade. I could not go with the facade anymore. And I, I don't even know where the no came from, but I was like, no, I don't. And that was the first time that trust was really brought up. And when I said that, he kind of just turned and looked at me and then he put down whatever he had to put down. And then he was like, oh, well, we need to talk. And so we talk. And honestly, from the very first time that I said that I did not trust him and I told him why I didn't trust him, I didn't want to call him a liar but I was like you know you kind of embellish a lot of things and so when I said that to him 
his thing immediately was, well, you know, maybe we're better off as friends immediately. Like if this is something that you can't do. And I'm looking at him like, so his response right there kind of really enlightened me a lot about him because one, you don't want to take accountability because his thing was, I'm sorry if you feel like I have been dishonest or if you feel like I've been dishonest instead of owning it. So he does not want to be held accountable. If you try to hold him accountable, eh, you get the ax, okay? And because he just does not want to. He, but, and I, one time I remember I told him like, you really believe the hype. Like you have people who, oh, you're so great. You're so this, you're so that. And you have people who believe the hype and that goes to their head. That's him. So that's kind of where it really, really started changing. And he really, really then started like being even more underhanded. Because shortly after that, he would tell the kids things. The kids wouldn't speak to me. But that's because of the things that he was going back, saying to them, telling them, making me out to be the evil person. So it was really, really stressful in the house in that aspect. So in regards to the church, I knew I'm still thinking that it's going to get better. You know, we just got to work together and I got to hold him accountable for the things that he says out of his mouth. <sighs> Starting the church. So now we have members and a lot of my family joined the church. And so because of that, like that also adds a different layer to the story and me having people who I could really talk to. One of my closest aunties joined the church. And so things that I would usually call her about and talk to her about, I really couldn't because at that point, our relationship, the dynamics of our relationship changed. And I definitely did not want to go and talk about my business and her pastor's business to her. So I just couldn't. And that I think also played a big factor in a lot of things and just how things happened. He was able to manipulate the people in the church. There was one church member who she pretty much hated my guts. In fact, oh, I didn't tell you guys, but the new wife that he is married to now that he got married to three months, two and a half, three months after he left and we got a divorce, he married her. This person invited her to the church um, while we were married to speak. So that she just, when he left, she pretty much funded his hotel stays. She gave him money. That that's gonna be part four because I have the whole part of when he left and how that happened and what happened afterwards. So he's telling these, and I don't blame anybody who he was able to talk to and tell them things about me because at the end of the day, he knew how to keep everybody separate so that nobody would go and match stories. Like he was manipulating all of us. And so I don't have any ill feelings towards anyone, but I can say members, pastors, one, your pastor should not be coming to you talking about his wife. That right there is a sign that this might not be the man of God I thought he was because your pastor will not come to you and talk to you about his wife. So I know I got a lot of pushback from people, especially leaders in the church community who probably like just don't agree with me even saying the things that I'm saying, but God doesn't have a respective person and neither should you. God don't care if you're the pastor or God don't care if you got saved yesterday. He doesn't. 
But he does expect, if you are preaching his word, he does expect you to live up to what you are preaching. Do we all fall? We all do. And he knows we don't fall before we do it. But no, we have to start holding people accountable for their behavior. And when we see something that's right in front of us and we act like we don't see it, we embrace it. You become complicit. So... But nonetheless, so the church happened and we're doing church services and the church is good. Of course, I'm handling the money. So that money is stacking up. We're paying the bills. So he starts to want to get a salary from the church. And I was okay. Like, okay, you want to bring it to the board. So the board, of course, is telling me that he needs money. Fine. But at the same time, your pastor is going out preaching up the road every day of the week he comes in only on saturday like one you said that god brought you here to preach here this is your destiny this is what you're supposed to be doing and so the other point to where it was a wrap and he just hated my guts is when i said to him one either you're being disobedient or two you lied on god God's word does not change. So it's either two, either, either of those two. And y'all, that's when it was like a wrap. <laughs> Clearly, he was lying on God. Clearly. All right, so the church is going and the church, this is at the church, is decent, it's good. It was at home. He would lie to the members in the church. And these people would really act funny towards me. Like they would not open their mouth to speak. Um, one member of the church, she yelled at me in the church in the front of him. And I realized, and he said absolutely nothing. And I'm not going to cause a scene inside of the church. Um, so I'm looking at him and He's acting like he's looking down. He says absolutely nothing. Um, one time, the member says to him, says to me, we're together. And she said, oh, first lady, you need to learn how to treat my bishop. You need to. And I'm looking at him like, I need to. Fool. Every time somebody asks you how you're doing, you're able to say, oh, I'm always amazing. I'm always amazing to the point to where I stopped asking how he was doing because he gave me the same canned response that he gives everybody else. Oh, I'm always amazing. You should be amazing. Like, you living for free? You don't have to worry about your kids because your kids taken care of? You don't have to, you, I would sleep like a baby too. I would be great. So, I'm looking at him and he says absolutely nothing. But that was my sign then that somebody was talking about me to this lady or saying something for her to feel that comfortable to approach me like that and to say something like that to me, somebody was. And then it just started being to the point to where she was always in the business. Every time I looked, she, it was all, oh, I'm going to call her. I'm going to get up. And so I just sat back and started watching. So there really was nothing that I could do at that point. I probably should have reached out to some other people to talk to them, but I don't, I don't think that that's what God wanted me to do. Because if he did, I believe that when I pray to be in his will, he's going to work everything out. So... It was like everything that he did was getting exposed. Like I would see everything that he was doing. If I didn't see it, somehow something would fall out of the bag and I'll look down and there would be right smacking me in my face. Like, be careful. This is what's happening. And he couldn't take it. He, 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 he really couldn't take it. But the level of stress that it was causing on me and just everything, it was just too much. Coming into the relationship, he knew we had set expectations or whatever. 
but he knew. And I think that, honestly, I really think that he was trying to stress me out. I think that he was trying to get me sick. One, I am a cancer survivor and I was like a year and a half out of my cancer treatment when we got together. So that already, and I'm like, I see my doctors all the time, twice a year for my annual check or my biannual checks. And I'm also, I also have a neuromuscular autoimmune disease called myasthenia gravis. And he had looked it up because he had said to me, oh, you can't deal with stress or you can't deal with this. You can't deal with that. And I really think that he was probably trying to stress me out um, so that I would get sick, so that I wouldn't be any good, so that I would be just stressed out and I can't. And so, of course, he has to act like he is Mr. Chivalrous. Just thought about that, y'all. Just thought about that. So that is a part of the story that I think, and he did everything he could to stress me out. Everything he could. He was not helping with anything as far as even taking the kids to school. So it got to the point to where with the kids, I was pretty much doing everything for the kids. Me, my mom was helping out with the kids as far as taking them shopping, buying them different things, being home because he wanted us, he wanted to travel. He wanted me to go with him on the road. But of course, I could not just up and leave the kids and travel with him, leaving them home without any supervision. We're in another state and the kids are here by themselves, you know, waiting on my mom. That's not, that was not my ideal life. That was not, I did not think that that was the correct way of raising kids. Um, you're never there. And honestly, he ain't there now for them. And people are with him and people are egging him on and encouraging him in his new life to pretty much leave his kids behind. Because nobody wants to hold him accountable. Everybody's scared of holding each other accountable. That's pretty sickening. And it's not fair. You, you cause so much damage to people and you don't own up to it. That's, that's not, that's not right. We're doing everything for the kids because, and he has no money because by this time, especially at the beginning, he, this God called me to do this. So I'm thinking he's about to really do what he needs to do. He was supposed to be getting a job that never happened. And then when I questioned him about, okay, well, you need to get a job. Like I'm doing all this stuff. Like, are you looking for a job? After so many times of telling me that he's going to get a job and don't worry, babe, I'm getting a job. He then says, oh, um, I'm not supposed to work. I, I'm not getting a job because my, my this is my calling and God wants me to do ministry. And yeah, no. So this is pretty much what he told me that he was not getting a job. So, okay, that's, I'm like, okay <laughs> like what at this point i'm just going with the flow just doing my everyday activities and just honestly just becoming very very numb to everything that's around me so usually he would since he was home not working and when he would be home he would be in there on youtube looking at people preach online stealing their sermons so on youtube so one day he was not home and the mail came and it was at the beginning of the month and prior he would always be gone towards the first part of every month i didn't pay any attention he always had some excuse that he had to go back up to where he's from so okay so i'm going 
to the mailbox, which I never go to the mailbox. And I'm going walking to our mailbox and I go in the mailbox only to discover that the kids have been getting money from their mother's death benefit. He had me thinking that they weren't getting anything. They were getting $1,800 total. And he had me thinking they were, were not getting anything. So, okay. So I hold on to that for a little bit and just kind of watch his moves to see like what he's about, what he's doing. Then the bank statement came from the bank that he would frequent in his hometown where the kids have an account or had an account. And he was literally taking their money out um, and spending their money on whatever he, whatever other activities he had going on. And then when it was time for my stepson to get a haircut or to get anything, because by this time I had completely like backed off once I realized that the kids were getting money and like, no, you need to use this money for them. And so I started backing off and I was like, no, you, the kids need this, the kids need that. So then I start seeing where he started manipulating more people to doing stuff for them because I had backed off. So I don't know what stories he was telling them, but now they have to come and be Captain Save the Kids. So here's that same member from the church. Now she's coming. She's doing everything for, for my stepdaughter and other people he's calling. They're, they're, I see I'm like, why are they sending money to get her nails done? Like, you could pay for her to get her nails done. Like, what you got people paying for her to get her nails done? Oh, that's what they want to do. No, no, no. They just want to, you know, they wanted to reach out to her. They want to. I wasn't dumb. I knew what was going on. Especially when people started leaving those sad, shady comments under posts, like a picture I posted of me and my daughter on Facebook. And somebody leaves a, a little shady comment. I knew that it was a shady comment. But I wasn't about to give it no attention. Then he started with making my stepson pay for his own haircuts. He would pay, he would earn money working at a church. Oh no, he had to pay for his own haircuts. He had to pay for his own food. He had to pay for this or that. You and you have money for him. That's probably the one thing that still makes me upset. Everything else I'm kind of good with. Like, y'all have to know when God protects you. And God was definitely protecting me. But it's really the kids because they did not deserve any of what happened. Nothing. <sighs> All right, y'all. So... That's going to be it for today. The next part will probably be the last part. And I will discuss what actually happened when he left um, and the aftermath and all of the lies that I had to endure and how I was able to keep going. All right. So if you enjoyed this video, please like the video. If you have any questions, comment below. Clearly your girl is now an open book. So if you have any questions below, I have no problem answering them. So if this is your first time stopping by Craftable Things, go ahead and subscribe. Usually I am showing crafts and just giving everyone different crafting ideas. But this is a new segment that I've started and I am committed to this segment. So thank you all so much for watching. Until next time.